two young men take a shortcut along the Columbia River. Here, near Kennewick, Washington, they will stumble upon a discovery that will rewrite the history books and launch a three-year legal battle. I saw what I thought was a rock. The top of it, what I saw, was pretty round. And then after I picked it up, obviously, you know, I saw the teeth. Little did they know, this skull would take us thousands of years back in time and forever change our notion of who were the first Americans. Forensic anthropologist Jim Chatters. Very long, narrow brain case. Fairly distinct brow. And a nose that just jumps off his face. Very pronounced nose. These are all characteristics more often see on Western Eurasian skeletons, uh, European skeletons. The skull appears European, not Native American, and shows signs of being a few hundred years old. Jim Chatters believes they have found the skull of an early 19th century settler. The police call off the criminal investigation, and Chatters collects the bones. Chatters cannot fathom the importance of this discovery. It will turn out to be a settler like no other. The first clue is in the pelvis. What you can see from the, the pelvis when we found it is uh, it has a very narrow notch behind the socket for the thigh bone, and that narrow notch is indicative of the male. Chatters will come to call this male Kennewick Man. Over 10 trips, he will collect over 350 bone fragments, about 70% of the skeleton. Only the smaller bones remain missing. Now Chatters will let the bones speak. Then Chatters sees something strange and bizarre embedded in the pelvis. Chatters takes the pelvis to Kennewick General Hospital. He begins with a standard x-ray. The x-ray will show if the object embedded in the pelvis is made of metal, like a bullet or knife blade. But whatever is lodged in the bone is invisible to x-rays. It's clearly not made of metal. The mystery deepens. He tries a CAT scan next. The CAT scan will take images of the pelvis from many different angles, revealing anything from stone to plastic. Let's see what we got. Jim Chatters gets the surprise of his life. Buried in what he assumed was a 19th century settler, he finds an ancient spear point. Okay, and this basin point here, sharp, clear, serrated or sawtoothed edge that's characteristic of what we call a cascade point, which is a style that was most commonly used uh, between five and 9,000 years ago. The spear point cutting through bone and muscle left Kennewick man in lifelong pain. Chatters is baffled. What is a 19th century settler doing with a Stone Age spear point in his hip? The answer may forever change archaeology. Jim Chatters sends a small bone for radiocarbon dating, hoping to solve the mystery of Kennewick Man. A chemist crushes the bone and begins the process of analyzing an isotope called carbon-14. All living organisms contain carbon-14. But at death, this isotope begins to decay at a steady rate.
By measuring how much carbon-14 is left, the lab can determine the age. Kennewick man's age is nothing less than mind-boggling. He is over 9,000 years old, a man who lived before 7,000 BC, and one of the oldest and most complete Americans ever found. And yet, Kennewick man is a puzzle. Scientists have long believed that the first and oldest Americans were Native Americans. But with his unusual features, Kennewick man doesn't look like a Native American. Well, the best way to characterize this is that for most of my career of more than 30 years, I had been following in the tracks of someone, and I thought I knew who I was following. And then finally, with Kennewick man, I caught up with him and he turned around, and he wasn't who I expected him to be. The traditional theory of the peopling of the Americas begins during the last ice age, when a land bridge opens up between Siberia and Alaska. A group of people leave Asia, walk across the land bridge, and settle the Americas. It was long thought that these people were the ancestors of Americans. Kennewick man may overturn this long-held scientific belief. But this hastily made video is the last Jim Chatters ever sees of his remarkable discovery. For only four days after the radiocarbon date, the skeleton is confiscated by the government. All scientific work stops as five local Native American tribes claim the 9,000-year-old skeleton as their ancestor. When the coroner came to get the bones, actually he called me and says, hey buddy, I gotta come get the bones. And I just virtually panicked. I felt that I had not had time yet and, and really wasn't equipped to gather all the information that collect a skeleton of this import required. So I felt I'd failed posterity. It was a pretty tough time. By 1990, there were up to 200,000 Native American skeletons in U.S. collections. In response, Congress passes NAGPRA, the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act. Under this law, tribes can claim any skeleton over 500 years old as their ancestor, including Kennewick Man. What's going to happen to the skeleton if it's turned over to the tribes? It'll go in the ground. It'll go in the ground it didn't come out of. What that means very quickly is it will deteriorate and it will disappear. What happens in the next generation when 15 or 20 new methods come up that allow us to ask additional questions? We won't have that material then. The federal government begins taking the legal steps to repatriate Kennewick Man, but then eight leading anthropologists sue. They claim local tribes, even using today's DNA analysis, cannot trace their ancestry directly back to Kennewick Man. 